Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by AMS Media with me, Harry Simeon. And I hope you're going to enjoy this podcast. It's the very first of our player review series. We've had to get creative because, of course, the Premier League has been suspended until the 3rd of April. That's what we're being told at the moment. But we, you know, based on the news and the way things are going at the moment, not many of us can see the Premier League resuming at that date. And it will be a great thought, you know, if it could come back and it could take everybody's minds off this coronavirus and everything else that's going on in the world at the moment. But we've got to be realistic. And it looks unlikely, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. But it seems unlikely that the Premier League is going to resume on that particular date. So we've had to get creative. And we've been thinking all weekend about the type of content that we could bring you. And we figured... That would bring you some player reviews. We'll look at individual players over the next few days, decide whether they're worth keeping, whether they have a future at Arsenal, or if indeed it is time to move those players on and why. Um, I'll also be joined on this edition by Chris Davison, who many of you will probably know from Twitter. Um, one of the big Arsenal accounts on there, always bringing up-to-date news for people. Chris Davison's going to join me uh, to share his thoughts at the end, just to make sure that I'm not being biased. And of course, we always want to hear from you guys in the comments section below. And the focus of today's show, as you can probably see on your screens if you're watching us on YouTube, is probably the second most divisive player at Arsenal Football Club at the moment, after, of course, Mesut Ozil. It is Granit Xhaka. Now, Granit Xhaka... His season has been a mixed bag. Um, He didn't start the season particularly well. Um, Fans started getting on his back. He was booed at a couple of Premier League grounds, one of them being the Emirates Stadium. And famously, against Crystal Palace, he blew up. And he went off the rails and he started gesturing towards the fans. He took an age to walk off. And, you know, it seemed at the time like that was the end of of Granit Xhaka's Arsenal career. It felt like that was his goodbye, that the club were going to have no choice but to move him on. And it was just a few weeks, actually, after he had been named the Arsenal captain. Now, Unai Emery held a vote to select um, who the new captain was going to be. That was voted for by the players. And Granit Xhaka's popularity shone through there. We talk about him not being popular with the fans necessarily, but in terms of popularity with his teammates... He clearly was a popular figure because he won that vote and as a result he was named as the captain. Now spoken at length about that situation on previous episodes and you can go back um, and listen to those and you'll know that whilst I didn't agree with Granit Xhaka's actions, I didn't agree with the way the fans were treating him, I didn't agree with the way Unai Emery handled the whole situation either and I felt that... That played a massive role in him losing the dressing room at the Emirates Stadium and ultimately contributed to his sacking. I'm not saying that's why he got sacked solely, but I think it played um, a a big part in that. And I think he he really suffered uh, as a result. Now, talking about Granit Xhaka, we talk about this, you know, defensive midfield player who was constantly getting exposed in his position, um, you know, giving the ball away in sloppy areas on the edge of his own box, not necessarily the most mobile of Arsenal players. um, And that is a requirement for many um, when it comes to playing in that role. Most people want to see a defensive midfielder who can get about the park, who can close spaces, who can pull to the left, can pull to the right, in order to protect his back four. And Granit Xhaka certainly isn't the most mobile. Even his biggest fans will agree with that, I think. I think that's a fair comment to make. Um, But we have seen, since Mikel Arteta's arrival, Granit Xhaka almost reinvent himself. And again, I'm not saying that he's a player without any fault, but what I'm saying is he's a player who's improved vastly. And he's a player who looked as though he was on his way out. You know, we kept hearing about the Hertha Berlin rumours that there was a deal almost done and that since Mikel Arteta come, he's almost changed his tune, changed his mind, and now wants to stay at the Arsenal. And... The Hertha Berlin move, when that was was touted, felt to me like a move of desperation from a player who's quite clearly fed up of life at Arsenal Football Club, was fed up of, of the fans, was fed up of the whole relationship and just wanted out. Because as much as people don't like Granit Xhaka and as much as people criticise him at times, I still think he's above the level of Hertha Berlin and that's no disrespect to them. It just felt like a a man who had played for most of his career in Germany looking for a route back there, a desperate way of getting back to the Bundesliga and putting this whole Arsenal um, issue behind him, you know, the issue between him and the fans. And he was getting stick on social media. He was getting stick in the stadiums. And I guess he probably just got to breaking point. But to Mikel Arteta's credit, and most importantly, 
to Granit Xhaka's credit, he's turned it around and he's got on with his job and he's, you know, just done what he's been asked by his manager. He's kept quiet. He's got his head down and his performances, in my opinion, have significantly improved. They've improved, but also they had to be in a system that didn't expose him constantly, didn't expose him time and time again. And even when Arsene Wenger was at the helm, We'd see even Mikel Arteta playing that defensive midfield role, a player who you wouldn't necessarily say was cut out to that role and often got exposed because of his lack of mobility. It was a really similar situation. And I feel like when Mikel Arteta came in, he understood that, having played in that position for this Arsenal side, having played in that position in a team where the fullbacks would bomb forward with no regard for their defensive responsibility, in a team where the central defenders were constantly exposed and their only line of defence was that defensive midfield position. And I think Arteta understood that. And I think Arteta has made tweaks to the Arsenal system in order to accommodate for Granit Xhaka's shortcomings. And, and one of those is, is, like I keep saying, the lack of mobility. He's asked... Granit Xhaka to slot into a sort of left-sided position when Arsenal are in possession of the ball so that Bukayo Saka or Ser Kolasinac, whoever it may be on that left-hand side, can get forward without leaving the team exposed. And he's paired him up more often than not with the right player. When they're both fit, when they're both at peak condition, for me, Arsenal's most balanced midfield is Lucas Torreira and Granit Xhaka because Torreira does have that mobility, he does have that bite, and he does have that positional awareness to fill in for when Xhaka pulls out to the left. Um, you know, and he's also very combative, and you need that. I think when Genduzi plays, it's not so easy for Granit Xhaka, and I think when Ceballos plays, it's very different because. Often he'll be picked in games where Arsenal are tasked with breaking a team down and you need that, uh, you know, that ability on the ball from a deeper position. And then Granit Xhaka's role changes slightly because he's no longer the one tasked with playing the ball out because that's Danny Sabayos' job. But I think whatever you say about Granit Xhaka and whatever you say about the past, he has improved since Mikel Arteta's come in. And it goes to show that if you pick the right system, you can get more out of certain players. So you shouldn't always look at a player and say he's done you know, until you look at all the options. And I think Mikel Arteta very quickly, very early on in his Arsenal tenure, identified the problem with Granit Xhaka and the problem with the position in which he was playing. And he's adapted that. And we're now seeing probably the best run of form in Granit Xhaka's Arsenal career, I would say. Um, of course, there'll be people out there that disagree and there'll be people out there that want him gone. And the purpose of this is to review his performances this season and then for me to deliver my verdict on whether I'd keep him or whether I'd sell him in the summer or at least try to sell him. I'm going to bring you up some statistics here uh, on the screen. And Granit Xhaka's season so far, if we're talking about Premier League appearances only, 22 Premier League appearances. He's been in the starting 11 79% of the time. And it's a real testament to Granit Xhaka's ability to stay fit because, as we've seen with, with other players, it's not easy to be an ever-present in a team like Arsenal, um, you know, and particularly when he had all those problems and you, you look at that and you would say that, of course, well, you wouldn't say it's fact. Most of the games he missed were in light of that incident, that very unfortunate incident, which for me, I, I'm over it. I've put it behind me. I've passed it. I'm, I'm cool with it. You know, he exploded in a hot atmosphere um, against a group of supporters who had been, quite frankly, giving him shit for a long time. I was at Sheffield United, uh, I think it was a week or so before the explosion against Crystal Palace, and he was booed again when he was substituted, or ironically cheered, whatever you want to call it. So that explosion from Granit Xhaka was coming. And the sooner people realise that, the sooner they can just move on from it. I don't think it needs to be spoken about time and time again. And I think, if anything, the fact that he's bounced back from it and improved so much and got his head down and got on with it and he's clearly such a popular member of the squad in and amongst his peers is a testament to the man and he should be praised for it. Now, if we look at Granit Xhaka's output in terms of assists and goals, there isn't much. He's picked up seven yellow cards in the Premier League this season. Just the one assist... But then again, like I said, we're asking Granit Xhaka to play a very deep position. You you can't be expecting him to do that role and to be producing goals and assists with regularity. I think that's unrealistic. Therefore, um, you know, it, for me, it's a non-issue and I'm not going to look into that too deeply. If we take some statistics from um, the website whoscored.com, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, where they 
deep dive into statistics uh, quite a bit on that website, you will see that his average performance rating when he's played in that defensive midfield position over 24 appearances is 7.02 out of 10, which is by no means spectacular, but it is very consistent and it says that his level it is a pretty good level and he maintains that level um, and he's maintained that level throughout those 22 appearances in the Premier League. So that deserves much credit, I think. Um, people would disagree, but for me, a seven is a solid performance. Now, am I saying that Granit Xhaka is the best in the business at what he does? Absolutely not. I, I believe there are upgrades available if Arsenal are willing to spend the money. But based on what we're hearing, based on what we're reading, it doesn't look likely, particularly if we miss out on Champions League football again, that Arsenal are going to be in the market for some of these big hitters and some of these upgrades that people's, uh, you know, people are talking about and the names that people are throwing about. Granit Xhaka's strengths, according to WhoScored.com, are his passing, his aerial ability. I'd question that one a little bit, and his ability to to shoot from long range. I think he does shoot well from long range, and I think he probably doesn't do that enough. But in Mikel Arteta's system. When we bomb on, when we do attack, he's often dropped uh, that little bit deeper to allow the left back to push on. And he's provided that cover. And Arsenal have been a lot more effective in dealing with transitions as a result. So he deserves some credit for that. Um, probably commits too many fouls for most people's liking. I, I agree with that. I think that is the one thing that Granit Xhaka for me... Um, it is really frustrating on. I think he does commit way too many fouls. I think that needs to stop. I think he needs to cut that out. And some of them are clumsy fouls. Some of them are deliberate fouls to get himself out of a hole, which I'm okay with, tactical fouls, as some people like to call them. But I guess when I think about Granit Xhaka and I think about how far he's come in the last few months, I don't think it's crazy to say that if he continues to improve in the way he's improved since Mikel Arteta took the job, that he can be a good servant to this Arsenal team. Again, I'm not saying he's the best in his position in world football, but we've got to understand where we're at and we've got to realise where we're at um, as Arsenal fans and understand that unless we're going to go and spend £50, £60 million, pounds, are you going to find a, a, an upgrade on Granit Xhaka? If you think there is one that is available for less, I'd like to hear that in the comments. Let me know who you think. But for me, I think given what I've seen from him, under Mikel Arteta, I think there's enough to suggest that Granit Xhaka can help this Arsenal team in the coming years. And, and, and in my opinion, coming to the verdict, would I keep him? Would I sell him? I would keep him. I, I genuinely would. And that's going to go down um, not very popularly, I know, with, with plenty of you. Because I know when I've made videos and, and podcasts about Granit Xhaka in the past, it's a subject that people tend to get quite passionate about and people say but he's been here x amount of years and he's not improved and we wasted 30 odd million pounds on him etc etc but i just think he's more complete than some of the other players that we've got at the club i think he has got shortcomings but i think what Mikel Arteta has done really 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 well is address those shortcomings and find a way, not just through Granite Shaka, but through the way he sets up the rest of the team in order to mask those a little bit. And that is why his outputs have improved tremendously, in my opinion, since uh, Mikel Arteta's taken over. So that's my verdict. I'd keep Granite Xhaka. He's obviously popular around the dressing room. He's obviously one of the leaders in the dressing room. There'll be people who say that there are no leaders in this Arsenal team. I've heard it all before, blah, blah, blah. And, and you're well entitled to have your opinion on that. But for me, this guy is a leader. And the fact that he's come back from what he's come back from and then improved, for me shows his strength of character and it's a testament to the player and that shouldn't be taken away from him imagine imagine being almost hated by such a large percentage of your fan base and then having to turn out for that team again and having to get your head down how mentally difficult that must be and that has been the most impressive thing about Granit Xhaka's season for me Overall, has this season been great? No, it hasn't. Let's be realistic. Prior to, to Mikel Arteta's arrival, he was as bad as anybody else. But he has improved. The team have improved as a whole. Um, 
Uh, and he's he's going to be an ever-present in Mikel Arteta's plans. And I, I firmly believe that Mikel Arteta is going to stick with him. And I think he's right to stick with him. So that's my view. I would keep Granit Xhaka. Um, let me know, of course, what you guys think as well. We're going to go over to Chris Davison. And we're going to get Chris Davison's thoughts on Granit Xhaka. Um, whether he'd keep him. Um, whether he'd sell him. And, and what he's made of his season so far. Hi everyone, Chris Davison here. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. So obviously Harry's focusing on Granite Xhaka in particular in this video, talking about his season so far and whether or not he has a future at the club. And I'm just going to give a few of my thoughts on the player himself as well. So for me, um, it's been um, an up and down season for all of the Arsenal players. It's not been ideal, it's not been great. Um, but probably um, in particular for Granite, it's been um, quite uneasy for him as well. Looking back earlier on the season when uh, Unai Emery was still the head coach and the squad had chosen Granite to be the captain, to be the leader of the group, or the, the main one anyway. And um, looking specifically at that game where Granite was substituted and he uh, walked off the pitch whilst Arsenal were trying to get the equaliser or trying to get the winner. I'm not sure which one it was now. Um, he was getting booed and jeered off by the fans. Um, and uh, he obviously reacted to that and, and swore back at the supporters. Now, look, he is human like the rest of us. It would have upset him. I understand that part. But as a club captain and as a, as a footballer in general, representing a huge football club, it was totally unacceptable um, and very unprofessional. Um, and of course, after that, uh, shortly after that, he was um, stripped of the captaincy. Um, but look, that was swiftly put under the carpet, in my opinion. And since then, he's done OK. Look, for me, Granite Xhaka is still a very frustrating player to watch at times. You know, he can be sloppy, he can switch off. He's obviously a very aggressive player as well. So he gives away lots of silly fouls. Um, and I'm just not sure, what is he, 26, 27 now? I'm just not sure he's going to give much more than he already has for this football club. And that alone, for me, hasn't been enough. He's not a player that's blown me away since he arrived here a few years ago. So, look, if we can move him on in the summer, um, if we can get a decent price for him, and obviously pending we can get a replacement for him as well, um, then I would move him on. I really would. Obviously, there was, there was interest in him in, in, from Germany in, the, in the January. Sorry, So, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I just think... There's better players out there um, that could add a lot more to this squad. Don't get me wrong, Granite can still be an important player in that midfield. He keeps things going, doesn't he? He gets things um, progressing up the pitch. Um, but I just think there's bigger and better options out there for us. And like I said, um, I'm just not sure Granite will give much more than he already has. Um, so, yeah, if we can get, get rid in the summer, then that's the route I would go down. Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts. Obviously, very brief, but it'll be interesting to hear and, and see what Harry and the rest of you think on, on the player himself. So, yeah, take care, guys. That was Chris Davison. Thank you so much, uh, Chris, for your time. We really do appreciate it. Don't forget to follow Chris on Twitter. His uh, Twitter handle is in the description below. And that brings us to the end of the first player review episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, Leave your thoughts in the comment section. We always welcome those, of course. Um, and we'll be bringing you more of these uh, throughout the week. The next one will be on Ainsley Maitland-Niles, another player who's had a very up-and-down season. We'll be talking about whether or not he has a future at the football club and whether Mikel Arteta should keep or he should sell him. Don't forget you can join us later on in the week as well when we'll be talking to Adrian Clark. Um, very well-known analyst, of course, once represented the football club, does those fantastic videos on Arsenal.com, um, works at TalkSport and various other places. So uh, a man of great knowledge and, and of great understanding of the game. And he'll be joining me um, on a podcast edition to uh, to dissect Mikel Arteta's uh, early tenure at the Emirates Stadium. And if you want to leave your questions, I'll be asking the best ones uh, directly to Adrian. So leave those in the comments too. Subscribe, share, like, review. You, uh, the usual stuff, and uh, we'll be back very soon with more. Hope you've enjoyed it. Cheers. <laughs>